Hello and welcome to the Academy. So let us take up today's the Hindu newspaper for our daily analysis. So we are going to take up two articles. One is regarding the editorial, which talks about a global alliance to bridge the gender equity gap. And other article will be related to the seven Indians who recently returned back to home, who were facing the death row in Qatar. So we'll take up these two editorials, sorry, these two articles and discuss them in a detailed manner. So as we all know that Qatar has freed eight Navy veterans who were held according to a private media of UK regarding the espionage which they were conducting in Qatar on behalf of Israel. So still this evidence has not been disclosed by the Qatar government. And also, this is not been a actual mainstream discussion or delib deliberation, which India has also not disclosed. However, there are certain documents which Qatar has handed over to India and India deemed it as a confidential report. So still, we don't know, according to the official sources, we still yet don't know what was the exact reason for a uh, handing over the death penalty to Navy veterans. So here, as we all know that in the last year, October 26th, the death penalty was awarded for the eight Navy veterans. And in the aftermath of this death penalty in the month of December, the court has commuted and vacated the death penalty and awarded them the imprisonment. Imprisonment varying from the period of three years to 25 years. So since then, since the award of death penalty, India persisted stiffly and it was persevering the taking back the Navy veterans back home. So it is a huge diplomatic win for India because they have vacated all the penalties and punishment which were awarded to Indian Navy personnel and they are taken back to home. So this is a huge diplomatic win for India. And then we will look into how India has managed to bring them back home in the current discussion. So here, as per the sources, it is said that the India has conducted a very robust diplomatic efforts which has been overlooked which has been supervised which has been supervised supervised by our prime minister himself so here our prime minister himself held a meeting at the sidelines of cop 28 in dubai and one of the points which they have discussed is the issue related to death penalty awarded to indian navy veterans so this diplomatic convergence between India and Qatar and the corresponding leaders has in a way led to the acquittal of the Indian Navy veterans. Now, after the diplomatic efforts, after the efforts which has been put forth by our beloved Prime Minister, there were other efforts from the National Security Advisor as well. So here, our National security advisor, that is Ajit Doval, also went to Qatar and held a back channel with Qatar. So he also played a prominent role and he held many talks with the relevant stakeholders related to this issue. And also the Navy veterans who were held by Qatar government was also given the constant consular access the embassy access to all the Navy veterans. So in this regard, the Ministry of External Affairs also played a prominent role. And after the diplomatic efforts, after the diplomatic efforts, India was also very careful in conducting its domestic political attitude. So here it is common that whenever the Indians are, in, are at danger in the foreign countries, it is common that the government of the day will be at highly rhetoric 
in nature will be pledging with great promises of bringing them back. So here this issue was at most sensitive in nature because here the Qatar court was involved, Qatar government was involved. So there were serious allegations against the Indian Navy veterans. So the punishment at the highest level was awarded. So hence any claim by Indian government in the domestic platform of releasing them would have definitely discomforted the Qatar government. So hence India played here very delicately and played very balanced approach in the domestic politics. So whenever the question was arised, so whenever the question was arised in the parliament, whenever the question was posed to the Ministry of External Affairs in the parliament, he replied it in a very sensitive manner. So he did not comment it in a rhetoric manner, but he had said that it is a very sensitive manner and the government is deliberating on it was his answer. So he was not particularly rhetoric about this issue. So this is where the government has played it very smartly and delicately in the domestic platform, which have averted the discomfort which would have been made with the Qatar government. And also the government, the Indian government also heard the desperate pleas, the desperate pleas made by the family members of Navy veterans and government also guaranteed them that India, Indian government on behalf of them will fight the case. So here the government did not promise them or assured them of bringing them back. But here the government has provided them minimum assurance of fighting them in the court and provide the legal and consulate support. So this is uh, this efforts of government in the domestic area is very appreciable because India here did not had any rhetorical promises of bringing them back. So this did not discomfort the Qatar government also. And then moving further, India also leveraged its foreign policy, Indian foreign policy here. So long been India was weaving India was perceiving the Middle Eastern region or the Gulf region with the hyphenation of Pakistan and Israel. So here, India till around last decade had a view on Middle Eastern countries or nations which was hyphenated with Pakistan and Israel. So here, India was having a view, having a hesitant view on Middle Eastern countries because the, orga the organization of Islamic cooperation constantly raised the issue of Kashmir and backed Pakistan. And also India was having a robust relationship with Israel. And even these countries did not have a full-fledged relationship with India because of having a relationship with Israel, which is hostile to the Arab world. However, both the Gulf countries and India overcame this hesitancy in, 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 the, in their bilateral or foreign policies and started to have a full-fledged relationship. So especially after the event of Prime Minister Modi holding the chair of Prime Minister, he had a particular concerns regarding holding a robust relationship with the Middle Eastern countries. So he wanted to have a greater relationship with Middle Eastern countries and Gulf countries. And this has led to the diplomatic win in the current Qatar issue. So this is about the Indian foreign policy. So India has leveraged its foreign policy to bring the Navy veterans back to home. And also in addition to the foreign policy, India also leveraged its deepening economic and energy related ties with the Gulf country that is Qatar. So recently, India has inked the LNG deal where India will buy the LNG of Qatar for further 20 years. So from many sources, it is clear that the economic ties, the growing economic ties between Qatar and India has 
leverage has been leveraged to free these indian navy veterans and also the indian diaspora which is present in qatar is also said to be one of the cause for having the bargaining deal or indirectly these indian diaspora is contributing to the economy of the qatar so all these scenarios that is indian foreign policy indian diplomacy and then india's delicate approach in domestic platforms in parliament so all these efforts of india that is foreign policy diplomatic efforts and its domestic domestic promises all these led to the freeing up of qatar qatar uh, freeing up of the indian navy veterans who were held death penalty by the qatar government so this is about the issue related to the indians indian navy veterans coming back to india now we'll take up the editorial section here so this editorial talks about a global alliance to bridge the gender gap or gender equity gap so here this article becomes important from your gs2 paper where there is a topic on inclusive growth and also from gs1 sorry gs2 paper where there is a topic on social justice so from both these papers one is gs3 that is inclusive growth and gs2 the social justice this issue becomes important so here in terms of gender equity india has taken several steps in the past and especially in the current times during the world economic forum india has called for the global alliance forging of global alliance to provide the gender justice and equity so here india has taken up the global alliance in order to bring the solutions for gender inequality and gender justice and this effort started from the new delhi declaration new delhi declaration this declaration was signed in the g20 summit recently held g20 summit which india was heading it so here this g20 summit which was headed by india finalized and emphasize the need to advocate the growth agenda driven by women led development so our future growth agenda should be women led development is what been said in the recent g20 summit and also this has trickled down to the recently held world economic forum so in this forum india particularly came up with the alliance at the sidelines of world economic forum so here india proposed alliance for global good global good gender equity gender equity and equality so here india has came up with an alliance where it emphasizes the global collaboration in order to find the global good the global good which can be achieved only through the gender equity and equal so here according to the reports it is been said that this global alliance includes global think tanks global think tanks ngos and certain industrial associations and the country leadership so here many countries are curious and enthusiastic in order to participate in this global alliance in order to render the gender equity and gender equality and also this alliance aims to devise scalable and practical solutions and practical solutions for advancing women led development in the various sectors including the agrotech agrotech women enterprises health sector skilling sector other emerging technological sectors so hence this global alliance aims to devise a practical solution in all the sectors where the women's interest will be advanced and also here india is also have taken the responsibility of global leadership because of india's success story 
success story. So India is said to be one of the eligible candidate, eligible member country to devise such a alliance of that scale where it requires the global leaders, the countries, industrial associations to be involved. So even the member countries of the World Economic Forum also praised India's efforts and they said that no other country is much apt like India to hold this the leadership of alliance. So what made India a eligible member country to frame a global alliance involving multiple stakeholders? So in this regard, we'll look into India's success story in rendering the gender equity in rendering gender equity. So here, when it comes to political representation, even though there is a low percentage of women's representation in parliament, India has set a goal of reaching 33% or one third of the seats of parliament, which will be reserved for women exclusively. So in this regard, Indian parliament has passed the women reservation bill last year. This is related to the political involvement of women. And then when it comes to budgetary allocation or economic leverages for women here in the recent budget of 2023 and 24, India has allocated around $27 billion, $27 billion under the gender budgeting. So this gender budgeting will be framed only to target the women, their education, health, skilling. So all these sectors where women will be advanced, will be targeted with this gender budgeting. And also with regards to employment here, according to periodic labor force survey, they said that women's labor force participation has increased from 23.3% in the year 2017 and 18 to around 37% in the year of 23 and 24. So this is a remarkable achievement which India has made in the employment related, women related employment matters. And then the female enrollment in higher education has also increased so it increased by 28% in last 10 years. And apart from higher education, specifically when it comes to STEM education, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, in this sector as well, women course enrollment has increased where women's share in this STEM courses is amounting to around 43%. So nearly 43%, that is nearly half of all the enrollment is being done by women. So this is where the at the highest level of education, there is a gender parity which India is been achieving. And then when it comes to rural women here as well, in the recent budget, we have seen that nine crore women, nine crore women are participating in 83 lakh self-help groups. So this is rendering overall development for women. So this is how the gender equity is being achieving by India. And India has set certain robust goals and it is also in the path of achieving the sustainable development goals where there is a specific goal that is gender equality. And this is where it makes India an eligible member country to frame a global alliance, global alliance related to gender equality. However, moving forward, we need to urge all the industries across the world to come forward and share their best practices to include women, train women, so that women will not be left out in the current industrial revolution 4.0 and in sync with that they should be trained and included and also make the works workspace workspace more safer and secure for their participation in economy 
and also we should focus on gender aspects in all global related issues in all global related issues so here when it comes to climate change we need to focus on how the climate change will disproportionately affect the women and when it comes to biodiversity even in this aspect we need to look into how the women will be affected particularly and when it comes to desertification there is a convention that is united nation convention on prevention of desertification in all these kind of global platforms and issues and deliberate deliberatory platforms we need to discuss a gender relative matters and we need to be sensitive to gender related issues so here india's one of the foremost principle or basic fundamental principle that is vasudeva kutumbakam is been pushing india to frame such a global alliances in every matter in every sensitive matter and even in the gender related matter india is coming up with a global stakeholder approach in order to deal with the issues related to gender so this is all about today we'll take up more editorials in our upcoming session thank you